Next up on Howler for an hour, we have A Nightmare's Trip. This is a visual novel that is kind of furry, so I was kind of interested. Could be a little lower. Sorry, I'm slow riding. You are slow riding. All right, I'll turn down just a tad more then for you. This game interested me because it's got it's got some cute art in it. I'm kind of curious if it's any good. I'm not really sure. I take it down just a little bit for you, Uncle. You're welcome. Let's fire it up. Not all of us remember what it's like. That's what other people in nature, nat natura, tell me. But I can. The night on which I was born, I could still remember the glee I was filled with at the thought that I would make this new world mine. But, is that quite right? No. This world, it didn't become mine at all. Instead, that night, as I sought my freedom, I became more trapped than I could have known. T'was the night I was unshackled from the change unto which I was bound. I cast aside the conductor who'd borne me. That night, I... I did something terrible, didn't I? It was late. They say you're supposed to turn the lights off before you sleep, but this kid had them on. Perhaps for some comfort, but it was useless. The bags under their eyes showed the truth. It was the same routine every time I gained consciousness. In the light, the shadows just grew longer, drawing them, drawing them to what was coming. <laughs> that just made it worse. It's you again, isn't it? Said the kid. Please, please, just go away. Nightmare. I approached. My movements were slow, lethargic. Inch by steady inch, the kid watched me waver and shift and squirmed. They always push their eyes shut as if that could somehow stop it. But when they do that, I simply call upon... Uh, the fear of sound or the fear of pain? Um... I, I think I'm a more a more of a fear of sound guy. Yeah, I like I like spooking via voice, not by hurting somebody. Children have this fear, the fear of thunder far off in the stormy skies. They fear they have the fear they have of being stuck in the train rails, of being caught in the path of the far off noise as it comes close. What are you doing? It matters not how tightly their eyes may close or how hard they may muffle their ears. The noise is inside their head. They immediately freeze up, trying to steal their breath and pretend as if they're already dead. No matter. I can still feel their warmth, their connection. And so there is no escaping me. Grab and seize them. Wait in absolute silence. Oh, we gotta wait. That's absolutely the way you do it. Nothing is the scariest thing. I relax, waiting to pounce the moment they, should sh they show a hint of life. The kid continues to try playing dead, but it proves to be to no avail. I already know that they're still there, trembling with fear. I was almost there, almost free. I'm so close. Just hurt them, keep hurting. Why won't they let go? They let go, let go, let go of me. Why won't they just let go of their f fear, fear? Cry out all my violent, disgusting emotions. Destroy them and everything they hold dear. Um. Let's cry out all my violent, disgusting emotions. Kara! I so slowly absorb all their angers, fears, anxieties, and weaknesses, and I'm given a new form. Their, their name. Wait, that isn't right. What was, what was their name? Why can't I, why can't I remember? In an instant, the world around me darkens into nothingness. I hear a faint, quiet voice. A noise can't hurt you. Blank, 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 blank. M Mom, it's just a nightmare. Don't worry, it's slowly passing. You'll forget about it in the morning. For it would be so simple for me. This child's connection is one that I've been cut away from, one that's allowed me to be my own being. But now that it's been left behind, it's possible I'll never feel whole again. I feel so empty. I... So... So very... Is this how the dream ends? Just another nightmare to wake up from and forget? Is there more? Can there be more I haven't realized? Prologue, Birth of a Nightmare. This is a nightmare's trip because apparently you couldn't read the title screen, Beerus. <laughs> My journey begins at, in the waking dawn. 
As I slowly ease into consciousness, I begin to feel the sensation that I was forgetting something. Turn. Snapping awake, I slam the alarm clock snooze button in an instant. My entire body is alert, and the shock of it remains for a brief duration. Oh, that's okay, Beerus. I'll still heckle you, though. I take stock of my surroundings. Oh no, oh no, oh no. I'm going to miss my flight. Oh, never mind, false alarm, thank god, okay. I don't have to worry about leaving for another hour. I close my eyes again. <laughs> I should probably move my Shaddox, huh? That's a good point. My Shaddox is in the perfect pot spot, but it's also in the perfect spot to be in the way. Hold on a second. Whoop. There you go. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, 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 dot. Wait, no, actually, I do have to leave right now. <laughs> I immediately jolt out of my bed, feeling the thud of my feet on the carpeted floor. My fluffy chest feels free, loose, and heavy as it bounces in tune with my footbeats. Also, uh, moderators can change the game title and ga and library uh, to, so that people actually can... With people asking what the game is... What, yeah, mods, please, uh, when I'm doing Howler, if you don't mind changing the game title and stuff, it, that'd be helpful. <laughs> my fluffy chest feels free, loose, and heavy as it bounces in tune with my footbeats. My legs tremble stiff and my heart races, hoping I didn't wake up my housemates with this racket. I seize my phone from the nightstand. 2 a.m. Well, that's not good. That's not good at all! Assuming the taxi doesn't run into much trouble with traffic, I'm going to arrive nearly 20 minutes late. Oh, jeez! Well, okay, the flight leaves around 7.25 a.m., and I still have to around three hours to kill by the time I get to the gate, but who knows? Anything could happen along the way. Security could take longer than it should, I could get lost and have trouble finding my gate, and what if the train inside the airport breaks down? Ah! I guess I should stop worrying a monthly so much, but, oh, jeez, I just can't help worrying. I continue to be a mess. Okay, okay. Let's think about things one step at a time. First, I gotta grab my suitcase. Then gotta wait for the taxi. And then finally... God, I gotta get some sleep. Wake me up when we get there. Ugh. 40 minutes later. Ugh. It felt like I slept for hours. I was, I was just trapped in a strange dreamscape, subjected to the many visions my mind has been a mean to unleash. But I can't even remember any of it. Any semblance has faded away in mere moments. Oh well. As I wake up, I take a small glance at the taxi driver. Who, has, who hasn't said a word since the beginning of the ride? But I didn't need to hear any words to see my destination, Luna Skyport, flashing brightly on the monitor. I tug my fur lightly and brace for an imminent rush. I'm here in good time. What did you guys just do? Oh. Oh, guys, um... You guys don't know my formatting. Hold on. This is my forebedding. And technically there should be an apostrophe. Like that. Th this is my formatting. Just do this. <laughs> there you go. I rush into the check-in to immediately do just that. Check-in. For my flight, making sure my suitcase is tagged properly as a carry-on. Hmm. Adrian, right, correct? Ah, uh, yeah, that's me. Am I clear to pass? Yes, allow me to check your bag. I hand the I hand the handling agent my suitcase. After they weigh and take it, they place the suitcase onto a large conveyor belt where it quickly disappears from sight. Thereafter, they quickly pull out their attention back to their computer and print out my boarding pass. Here's your boarding pass. Your gate is D7. Pronouns he, him. Okay, good to know. Ah, ha, ah, thank you. The next step is to successfully pass through security. Without even starting, I can tell this is going to be a trial. Every early morning flyer, a tiresome bane in my way. The line's fairly slow, and my tappy foot gains speed as I grow more and more restless. With just a small backpack remaining, all I have to do is place my phone and game system into a separate container and I'm good to go. Well, except... Please step into the scanner, please. Oh, the... alright. I enter the scanner and pull my hands up, but as soon as the scanner's camera passes by me, close red. Sorry, but could you give us another 30 seconds? We need to run the scanner again. Wait, did I do something wrong? Hmm, hmm. Well, 
Are you, by any chance, still carrying the electronics? No, just this watch I had. Please hand it over to me. Oh, oh, whoops, sorry. I suppose you couldn't tell underneath all that fluff. He is fluffy boy. Better hope you aren't traveling to a hot country. Nah, <laughs> I think I'll be okay, sir. Thank you. Security passed. Now it's time to head to my gate. What was it again? B7, right? I like that he kind of looks like a Redamon, but he's got like evil eyes in his floof, too. I check my boarding pass as I head off to the B gates and immediately swivel my on my heel and start heading to my destination. Good thing I checked. I nearly headed in the completely wrong direction. This really is quite relatable. This character is very relatable. <laughs> this is stuff I would do because of anxiety. D7 is in Terminal 1, which I need to get to via, via the train. Crazy, right? There's like a metro in here. Well, it's definitely cleaner and faster than the metro back in the area. It's hard to keep balance as the train speeds up to an unimaginable pace, but thankfully, by the time I started to fall down, I managed to stumble out of the train and head towards my terminal. 5.42 AM. There's a lot of time to kill before my flight leaves. I probably shouldn't have been so worried about being late, but I guess that's the kind of person I am. I'm always anxious and nervous about everything. Set up a trip like this was nearly impossible without Riley's help. Oh, Riley for Poker Roll uh, helped him set the trip up. That's nice. I plop down on a chair next to my gate, before immediately realizing I should go have some kind of breakfast. Looking like a fool, I get back up and bolt towards the terminal map. It's Tiber. <laughs> now, where should I eat? Uh, meow Meow Wow or Max Pretzels? Okay, Meow Meow Wow Chow or Max Pretzels? Well, I'll let the streamgoers pick. In fact, let's use a new thing that I have. Hold on a minute. I want to try out- this is a perfect time to try out a new function that has been presented on my dashboard. One moment. Where is it? There it is. Here it is. So, remember how the poll system I had broke and stopped working correctly? Well, apparently Twitch added their own, like, just embedded. So I can now just do this, assuming this works anyways. Let's see. Allow voting with bits. Now, well... Nah. Right, we're gonna we're gonna do a one minute vote. Let's see how this works. There should now be a vote. I don't know how it works. Do you see it? Let's see what the stream goers think. If you don't see it, then somebody who does see it, tell them tell them how to see it on top of the chat. Ah, go at the top of the chat. Yeah, I see it too. It's at the very top of your chat box. Just hit the arrow and hit a vote. How do I do that on mobile? I don't know. <laughs> uh, it may not work for mobile. Not sure. All right, it looks like. All right, Meow Wow Chow won. Okay. All right, let's go to Meow Wow Chow. I head towards the store and order the titular Meow Wow Chow. A simple breakfast with toast, sausages, eggs, and fries. That sounds really lovely. Actually, that sounds really good. The sandwich starts to fall apart as I try to take massive, chunky bites out of it. I like this character. This feels like a curse, but I prevail nonetheless. I smash the sandwich into my untamed gob successfully. Nom. I head back to the gate, feeling refreshed and ready to go, immediately checking my phone's clock. 6.20 a.m. Still roughly an hour to kill. I wonder if anybody's online. Hmm, Riley's on, playing Dragon Pest 9 early in the morning. Let me go pester him. Dot dot dot. Psst, hey. Jack, you caught me, didn't ya? What? Drag, I did indeed. <laughs> so, 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 you've got your situation situated. M yes. I am currently waiting for my flight to leave. Excellent. How's the new expansion? Ah, oh, it's pretty good. They've been, they've really stepped up the rhyme for the main story and the classes are fun. The new classes are fun. Ah, I'll join when I get home. Don't worry about it. You've earned this trip, man. To me, Kuba City is like the kind of place that's just fun to walk around and waste time in. 
But in case you have, that sounds like a terrible idea to you, I have sent you that doc I made on the cool, sick locations you could check out. Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't know what I really want to do there besides play games, buy stuff, eat food. It sounds like me. Man, that is all you should do there. Okay, there's some cool historical stuff and such that you should also do. But, you know, video games. Hey, give me a cool figure if you see one anywhere. A any specific series? Nah, it's gonna be whatever. I'll probably know where it's from. <laughs> I put my phone away, making a scrunched up face. Because I genuinely wonder if Riley's screwing with me. Then again, he pretty much knows every an everything anime, which, more power to him. I checked my phone's clock again, pulling it out of the pocket right after taking it out. 7 a.m. Time to line up from boarding. I make haste to line before checking the monitor, realizing an inevitable error. Flight boarding has been delayed till 7.40 a.m. Or terror. So now I have to stay safe for another 40 minutes. Great. 7.10 a.m. I put away my handheld console after feeling cramps in my soft hands. Soft, foofy hands. <laughs> 7.20 a.m. The line gets longer and I realize leaving it to sit down, leaving it to sit down is a bad idea. 7.30 a.m. My legs begin to feel incredibly stiff and I feel like I'm petrifying into a stone statue. 7.39 a.m. And then... Flights ITEW66 is now ready for boarding. Hooray! -o! Seriously, this looks- he looks like a Redamon, but slightly different. I like- I like his design. The line's moving. Oh! I entered the plane, looking for my seat. 29F. It's very far back. I trudged through the massive line for five straight minutes before finally heading towards my seat. I stole my backpack and plopped down, gearing ahead for the long, long trip that I'm about to make. We can hear a mic intercom pick up, and the flight attendant begins providing the service announcements of the morning. Good morning, everyone. We're sorry, but it'll take an additional 20 minutes before the plane takes off. Please head to your assigned seat as soon as possible. A translator then provides the same announcement in a foreign language. Yawn. That. Anyways, welcome on board the Skylines Flight 2LV, bound for Kumo City. My name is Tora, and I'm your in-flight service director. Your cabin crew are here to ensure you have an enjoyable flight to Kumo City, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hi, Jeffrey. That's a weird heart you just- I had to- I had to double take at the about you was posted. I began to doze off, immediately ignoring the request to follow the safety instruction videos. The plane's instructional video blare is simultaneously educating about flight safety, and also promoting an upcoming action movie about an eight- eight-legged high school student going on a trip. What? As the instructional video finishes, the play starts moving, and then accelerating. Accelerating. And then off it goes. I gotta do that. My eyes are shocked wide open. We're now off the ground, and the inertia of the takeoff carries my entire body to the back of the seat. The plane then stabilizes, and I hear a bing sound. A kid gets off their seat and starts running straight to the lavatory. I try to sleep out the flight to pass the time. I'm pretty tired, so it shouldn't be too hard, right? Gah! Can you please stop doing that? Sorry. It was hard, and I am still very sleepy. I'm not sure how long I was out, but I feel even more exhausted than when I closed my eyes. I guess I could take out my handheld console and play some games I've been meaning to catch up on. Well, we- okay, well, you know what? I'm just gonna keep doing polls, because that's a fun way of doing things. Alright, new poll. Which game are we gonna play? What are the names of them? Let's see. Noise and One Step from Eating. No, you didn't. Okay. Yeah, I misspelled it. Whatever. Don't care. You get the idea. <laughs> Also, Kyoshi, when you said this is giving you Floraverse vibes, I'm not actually sure what Floraverse is. I've never heard of that. Or maybe I have. Maybe I briefly have. I can't quite remember. Well, it seems that it's pretty obvious which one's winning this one. Oh, a webcomic series.
One step for me, Eden One. Not surprising. I choose to play One Step from Eden, an action roguelike game where you fight on a grid. It's fast paced, chaotic, and frankly overwhelming. <sighs> game over. Wow, I'm really bad at this. But just as I'm about just as I'm about to completely fall into my groove, my, the heaviness of the heaviness of my eyelids begins weighing on me once more. Where was this feeling before the flight? I attempt to fight my slow descent into unconsciousness, but it's a hopeless struggle. I succumb to it and knock flat out. Fifteen hours later. Ding! The first thing I see is the seatbelt light turning on. Well, no. Actually, the first thing I see is a seismic GoCrows magazine sucked into the seat in front of me. Seismic GoCrows. Uh, but then my eyes are drawn to the seatbelt light. I try to get my bearings as I look around, seeing everyone awake and having tea. What are these, British people? A flight attendant comes towards my aisle seat. <laughs> Excuse me, but you haven't received your complimentary snack. Th okay, sorry, Mr. Piranha Plant, or Miss Piranha Plant. Oh, uh, she tosses me a bag of chips. Uh, oh. Uh, I mean, I I'm not gonna leave you guys a choice with the ones I wanna be nice. I wanna be nice. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> I, I like this person. Say, aren't you one of them nightmares? Uh, yeah, you could say that. Ooh, I don't know too many of them. Does it feel weird, going from being a lump clump of someone's fears and anxieties into branching off to become your own stubby little person? Um, I mean, yeah, she's right. I wouldn't describe myself like that, though. Yeah, that's a way of saying it. Our creators are generally referred to as conductors. They say fear is like music, and anyone that sees their fear so clearly as to direct it into something real is as skilled as a conductor. Or something? Interesting. And yours? They really must be something to make a face as darling as yours has been. A little bit. I think they're in Kumo City. Oh, so is that why you're flying to the city? Are you both, like, friends? Or are you planning to hop over a surprise visit? Sorry, I'm just a bit of a curious creature. I don't mean to pry. Oh, um... Um, hmm. Well, technically, I think from the context of the earlier dialogue, we're technically just on vacation. So, I'm gonna answer that, because it's probably the truth. Oh, I see. Just a simple trip. Yeah, just a simple trip. Hmm, I see, I see. She seems doubtful of that answer. Anyway, Kubo City is a lot of fun. There's so many places to visit, so don't worry about having nothing else to do there, kiddo. She takes a huge, gigantic breath to catch up with her excitement. Gigantic, huge breath. She sure did that. What you planning on doing? Maybe you want to see them animes? Uh, what? Please go away. Yeah, I do. I'll just be, yeah, I do. Interesting. I don't get it, but I'm sure there's reason y'all whippersnappers enjoy them. I recoil slightly at their answer. But attempt to keep my smile up anyway. <laughs> Look at this face. Welp, gotta head back to my station. It was so nice talking with you. Enjoy the rest of your flight. Achievement unlocked a complimentary friend. That's cute. Mm-hmm. She walks away and leaves me by myself. With that conversation out of the way, I pulled my sights towards the window. The beautiful night sky paints over the bright, lit city. My plane ride is finally over. We will be lowering altitude now. Please buckle your seatbelts. I shake in excitement as my ears begin to pop again. Oh, yay! <laughs> Hey! Chapter 1, Taking Flight. Disguise Unknown Achievement. Well, we uh, change. This is a nightmare's trip. The plane shakes and bounces around as it reaches the ground. The air pressure finally normalizes, and the need for swallowing is at an end. I check my phone, realizing that my phone data doesn't go this far. Great. All the passengers grab their carry-on bags and begin skittering out of the gate. I follow, stumbling onto the terminal. I felt like my incredibly long nap on the flight didn't help curb my exhaustion one single bit. I'm still dazed. It's probably best to get myself out of here and into a comfy, plush bed as soon as possible. Let's see. Ah, I have to take a train to get to the hotel district. Got it. That shouldn't be any trouble. Oh, it, it is actually. I have no idea where I'm going. Hmm, okay, okay. So that's the ticket station over there. 
I checked the times listed on the station. The Mog Station, as it's called. Oh, there's Moogles here. I head over to the counter and purchase a ticket for the next train. Oh, what? It's leaving in five minutes? Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man! Ah! Flop. Pat, pat. Ah, a Mog? They look like they're on quite a trip. Quite the trip. Pat, pat. I barely managed to catch the train in time, stumbling and clumsily landing onto the closest seat. Man, it is far- it is too late for this. Or- or too early? I don't know which is which. I finally can rest. Now it's time to see if- oh. My game console has no battery left. Must have still been on when I cocked out. I checked my phone to- Right, I need to get a SIM card or something first. <sighs> Why is this train an hour long? One hour later. We have now arrived at the train station. Phew, finally! One step closer to bed! I stumble out of the train and continue to navigate around the station, my way around the station, before realizing a shocking horror. I have absolutely zero idea where I'm going. Ah oh no, the data here sucks! I can't even load the map! What should I do? What should I do? Bed, oh bed, oh, do I want to sleep in a lush, comfortable bed? I loudly groan. Just as I pick up my carry-on and head straight towards one of the exits, I hear a loud voice right behind me. Yo, that's totally not the right way, man! I slowly turn around. You looking for the hotels? Most of them are on the other side. Facing towards me is a person with long mantis-like arms wearing a flat cap. You're traveling around, right? Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, the direction you're heading over is like the commercial area, man. Ah. Do you want help, man? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I just stumbled out of the train. Somebody mentioned a mog or something. I got no data and yeah, I'm lost. Uh... I'm gonna hope that wasn't referring to you, but anyways. I could take you around to the place since you're having trouble. You mean it? Gangle suddenly beams up, seemingly excited to get to show me around. Wait, now we know his name. Okay, good. Heck yeah, man! Name's Gangle! He, him! I've known the ins and outs of Kuba City since I was like seven, man. N nice to meet you, and thank you so much for helping me out! It's a pleasure, man. Now what's the exact hotel you're looking for? Well, it's uh, called Ueno. For reals, man, that's... that one's got quite the history. It's also fairly cramped. It, it is? Yeah, yeah, follow me! The two of us head towards the exit. Despite the massive density of people around here, Gangle seems to navigate around like a champ. How's he do it? There's like so many people here and it's like almost midnight. Kumo City really is a city that never sleeps, huh? So, I know what you're thinking. Gangle, how come there's so many freaking people here this late at night? Huh? Did you read my mind? Ha, <laughs> nah. You just have that kind of face on you. Wow, do I really look that lost? <sighs> well, I'd be delighted to know why. Okay, so there's a lot of various factors, but it's mostly been out of good old age tradition. This entire city is like what I'd describe as amazing culture class, man. Like, imagine cultures, as people. Wicked stuff, dude. Oh, but not a violent clash, right? It's more like an exchange of ideals? Ugh, you sound like a scholar, man. Wow, thanks. Man, man, hitman, history is cool. How about indulgence in our society, man? Alright, well, yeah, sure, would love to. Okay, okay, so, so, so. You see, Kumo City is a weird mishmash of several cities across alternate dimensions. Most notably, some places referred to as Tyron and Aero Japan in their respective dimensions. Uh huh. Strange thing about it is that these populations in total only consist of about 10% of those city citizens. Most of the residents of Kumo City are often travelers to completely different worlds, which... Crazy, right? Mm-hmm. So, what happened to most of them? Beats me. There's like... I think a full building dedicated to the list of people missing. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I know. Compared to like Natalia and Lunar's lead, there's... Many people's perspectives have been soured by that. Uh, the general vibe here has been less than positive as a result. Gangle immediately turns his frown upside down, not literally, of course, and begins expressively stretching his arms out. Yo, yo, did you know that there's like this amazing underground mall? Underground mall? Yeah, it's connected with the metro there. It's super tubular, like, in a literal sense. Any tourists would be whacked not to check out that place. Hmm, I'll make sure I get the time to go there. Oh, yeah! I mean, I bet you like anime and video games, right? Uh, yeah, I do. 
Well, the mall is like that one-stop place to buy anything related to that. You'll like it. Hmm, noted. But you should first tell me where I can even find it. Ah, uh, well... I can show it to you on your phone's map sometime later. I would totally recommend visiting the mall on Saturday, by the way. And not like tomorrow. Lots of shops that blow out as heck sales on Saturday. So perhaps if you need something fresh for tomorrow, so you probably hit like an arcade or something. Oh, you should you should check out the scramble. The what? The scramble. Scramble, scramble, scramble. <laughs> Go deep in the heart of the city, man, and find the most crowded, radical clashing of cultures in existence. That sounds terrifying. I don't think a crowded crosser is my idea of a tourist spot. D do you know where it is? Oh, you'll find it in the main shopping district of the city. Hmm, I see. I was thinking about checking out the places there first. Cool, so you probably visit the Scramble. Sure. Yeah, I know. We continue strolling along the street, passing by many buildings. Crazy, isn't it? The sisters got a rad mix of local mom and pop shops, large, large towers of offices, and awesome places to eat everywhere down the corner. corner. If you go into the area on the right, you're bound to see millions of places to serve tasty meats and drinks. Well, that's cool. But isn't it like 10 p.m.? That's awfully late. Also, it's kind of sketchy. I can see that, man. It's really weird seeing younger kids walk around that block sometimes. Brr. But it's not too bad. I'd recommend the food right alongside the block, though. Smaller crowds and less wait time really sell it. If you miss dinner, you gotta check these places out. Hmm. Wait, yeah, I did miss dinner. Ah, oh no. Oh, I'm gonna assume you have it, man. Yeah, that's not a wrong assumption. I've only now just got out of work, so I'm gonna look for a place, too. You wanna stop at a place together? Hmm. It's up to you. Yeah, sure, I like this guy. Oh, hell yeah, dude! Let's just eat first, man. I always take care of your stomach first, is my saying. Sure, what do you have in mind? We stop at a nice place selling various types of dishes known as the Don. The Don served here contains raw fish and rice. Oh, okay. Sushi. Wow, this place looks really nice. Fresh, right? What you gonna order, dude? Hmm. I think I'll have a salmon Don. I hate salmon. <laughs> Cool, I'll also have that. The dawn arrives early, and I begin my feast. My feral instincts slowly come back into gear. Crutch, smack, gobble. It's so good. Oh my god, I can't stop eating it all. I finish half of the bowl within a minute. Oh man, why do I eat so fast? I can't... Oh man, this stuff is umai. Umai? Naga. Savage, I don't... It's... I prefer white meat fish. I find pink meat fish to be a bit perfumey and overly, uh, overly, overly aromatic for my tastes. I do not like, I, I can eat salmon. I just don't prefer it. Wow, this is really good. And it's only 10,000 freaking leaves? Or 1,000 freaking leaves? Oh yeah, man, food here isn't too expensive. This is like the equivalent of fast food here. Whoa, this is practically gourmet though. It's okay, Kiyoshi. I wouldn't bring up I wouldn't bring up hop on topics in the middle of the stream, but it's all right. I just ignored it and we moved on. <laughs> it's really nothing. This is your idea of fast food? You're crazy. Right to the other side of us is a strange bear-like creature with clock-shaped glasses. They look like a plush almost. Yeah, y'all are too loud. Can't Gelma have some peace for once? Uh, what you? Yeah, me. Give him a gonna eat elsewhere. Maybe find cute girls. Bye! The bear plush, Gaelma, runs off. Wait, excuse me, ma'am. You forgot to pay. Oh, alright. Gaelma. Oh, she's kind of an enigma, man. Folks here think she has, like, some kind of penthouse here or something. We don't exactly know where she lives, but she seems to be a local here. Ah, I see. We resume our meal, finishing the remnants of the Salmon Dawns. This place allows us to put the finished plates on a belt for cleaning. We grab our belongings and head towards the cast register. 2,000 leaves, not including tax, but it was on Gangle. Are you sure? Hell yeah, man. You're a ton of fun to hang out with. It's the least I could do for you. But yo, I gotta get ready for work tomorrow, so I should be on my way. 
We should change numbers, man. Call me if you want to chill anytime or chat about anything. Yeah, all right. We enable our phone's connect exchange settings and put our phones towards each other. Within four seconds, our contacts were successfully exchanged. Also, you play Dragon Pest 9, right? Well, how did you know? I asked this as I visibly carry a phone case referencing an item from the game. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Cool, let's play some time. That's 11. Okay. Not... what? Actually, I don't know what I just mixed up, but sorry. I'm more focused on voice acting than saying the words right, I guess. <laughs> we both walk out of the store, stuffed. Good night, and have fun in Kumo City, dude. Gangle takes out his hand. Without hesitation, I follow through and exchange hands, clashing cultures for a moment as I can feel his energetic passion of his home directly pass into my arms. Thank you so much! Our hands release from each other, and then he leaves. I head back to the UNL Hotel, only two blocks away from that amazing Don restaurant. I finally check in, grab my dropped-off carry-on, and head up to my room. I head towards my hotel room and slot in the key. Click! Ah, I finally make it to the hotel room, exhausted and dazed. Tossing my backpack onto the vacant bed, I immediately crash onto my bed. <sighs> Guess I'll shower in the morning. I wonder how much shampoo he uses. Zzz. Also, hi there, Chibosuke. You are watching A Nightmare's Trip. We are playing as a nightmare. Chapter 2, A Night as Busy as Day. He sounds like he's totally a bro, but like a great bro. A cool bro. That other guy. <laughs> you. <sighs> Your light. It's familiar, somehow. Like a dream from long ago. Funny you should say that. I was thinking the same thing. Same thing. 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 Thing, 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 thing. Wait, you... Haven't we met? Before? My heart. Being like a drum, my mind disoriented. What was that? Was I meeting someone? And why do they feel so familiar? Hmm. I check the clock on my phone. 6 a.m. That early? Man, the jet lag is get really getting to me. Oh, right. I forgot to shower. I kind of sweat all over. Let me fix that right now. Hum, hum, hum. A dream. It felt way too real. Almost like I was connecting with someone. But who could it be? Why here? I could probably ask Riley later. I dry up, an admittedly difficult task with all of my fur. Okay, so, let's see. Riley did suggest we, I should go to the shopping district first. Let's do that after I get a quick bite. Heading back around the train station, I find a surprising amount of places to eat at. I quickly head to a small cafe and have some early morning, morning toast. Drowned in syrup and smeared in butter, this delight of an early morning meal really kicked me into gear. I want some toast now. I quickly tear it apart and stuff the meal to my mouth, accidentally going feral at 6.30 a.m. in the morning. Not again. It appears that when he eats, he, uh, he, gets really, he gets really into his food and goes feral, as he calls it. I like this character. He ferally eats. He really, he really chows down. Smack, smack, rush. <sighs> I clean up after myself and promptly leave. Okay, so before I left, Riley did send me the instructions I need to get to the district. Let's see here. So right on line 14 for two stops, then change to line 9 and stay all the way until I reach the Aki station. That doesn't seem too complicated. I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh. The train comes around, opening up to reveal a cluster of people trapped inside the train. Quietly, a huge crowd of people move out of the train, with everyone outside of the train entering after them. Hopping in, I'm immediately squeezed between several people, unable to see everything around me. Anything around me. I try not to panic. O okay, I'm beginning to panic. Ah, uh, oh lord. I start swaying everywhere in this in this hyper-AC train car. Ding. The train makes its first stop. More people are coming in than out, and I suddenly have a lot more space than... More people are coming in than out, and I suddenly have a lot more space than earlier. That statement doesn't make sense to me, but okay. Ding. 
and there's the second stop. I get off and quickly hop over to the other side of the station, where the trains in Line 9 are. Quick, barely making it, I land myself onto the, on the next, into the next train and manage to grab a seat. Phew. The subway here is a lot more strenuous than the system they had in, have in Lunar's Lead. Well, at least the trains here are nice. The setup in Lunar's Lead has always been poorly maintained, and I dare say it really grimy. The minutes go by as I wait for the train to finally arrive in the Aki train. The Aki station? Staring at the small displays on the screen, presenting either train-related PSAs or commercials. It takes me a bit to realize that it's just looping the same ads. Ding. Now arriving at Aki Station. I somehow make it. The interior of the station continues to stretch as I try to find some kind of exit. Ten minutes later. I finally out of the station and also manage to grab a SIM card at a nearby booth. I can finally use my phone's digital map and plot my course. The map pulls up a variety of stores, mainly clothing related, as well as to several restaurants, entertainment businesses, anime shops, etc. Well, I'm not in a rush to go clothes shopping since I don't feel like I need anything new. So yeah, I'm just gonna go to the anime store, cool. Did I mention I was starting to feel very hot? I feel like I'm starting to sweat everywhere. Maybe I should have gotten my fur cut. The air is super humid and the sunlight is becoming is being beamed out on me. It's turning me into a space heater. Surrounded by towering buildings, I throw myself into the streets of Kumo City with nothing but a map. By the time my eyes are peeled away from my phone, I've arrived at that place. Does he even wear clothes? I don't think so. The scramble. Gengel was right on the money. This place is stuffed with people walking around it in 16 different ways. Wait, is that math even correct? Oh wait, oh no, it's already moving. Ah. Uh... The crowd on my side begins pouring towards many directions, disorienting me. I quickly manage to pick myself back up before bumping into someone again. Thud. Ow! Watch where you're go- Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Oh my god. Whoa, get a load of this feller! The strange yellow character pointed their finger at me, calling someone to examine my untidy presence. They're, they're for some reason wearing a thick poncho? Which makes no sense at all, how are they still alive? Gosh, Orange, look! They look so freaky! Uh, <laughs> that's mean. This Orange finally catches up as we're stuck near the curve of some one of the few sides of the scramble. They're also wearing a heavy jacket. Unlike their friend, however, they are visibly worn out by the heat. No, oh, please don't pay attention to her. What is even happening? S sorry, I'm already confused. Look at those fangs and the ears! K! K? Yes? No, oh, that's her name. We're wasting time, Kay. Stop admiring every single person that we come across. I am quite frankly dying in this heat. Nah, come on, bro. I am not your brother. Do you really not like spending like not spending time in every galaxy we land at? Stop being smelling the thorns, taking in the sights. No, not really. I don't want to be stranded in the heat any longer. Now, sorry for barging in, but it might help if you both change into something more comfortable to wear in this weather. What are you talking about? This heat is nothing. My jaw visibly drops. Orange stares blankly at Kay as she dances around in a warm blanket. You're actually crazy. Again, I'm fine. Ugh. So. Are you from around here? We could really use some help getting out of here. This, this fox is fucking adorable. Or Kitsune, I should say. No, I'm touring around. Name's Adrian, and I come from Lunar's Lead. Oh, it's a city. Here in, in Natura. That's what this whole place is called? Huh. I'm guessing you're not from this planet? I start to notice that Kay isn't looking at us, and is slowly running off in another direction. Yeah, you could say that. We kind of just got slung in into here from space, and I need her to get back. But she won't leave. Orange then begins to look around for a bit, before also noticing that she's got MIA. Great, not again. What do you mean, again? Well, she usually just bolts like this all the time. Ah, I can't imagine. Where do you think she's, she could have gone? Not too far. She tends to get fixated on random things. Sure, okay, let's look for her then. Uh, oh, thanks. We both look around the city in search of the missing space traveler. 
The insanely tough heat is starting to, sl starting to slowly kill Orange, who for some reason hasn't taken off his jacket yet. Hey, what's stopping you from taking off your jacket? You're gonna die in that. Oh, well, I'm not wearing anything else underneath. Oh. If Kay was here, she though, she'd probably tell me it'd be no big deal anyways, but it looks like this place is friendlier to people who actually wear clothes. You normally don't? <laughs> oh, this is kind of answering the clothes debate. 30 minutes pass. <sighs> well, I'm about to collapse, and that probably isn't good. Let's go inside that building and rest for a bit. Hmm, okay. Actually, the store I wanted to visit is just around the corner. Store? Orange's resourcefulness led us to a small magazine and comic shop. The air conditioning there was a force to be reckoned with, and all of a sudden, Orange could finally melt and relax. He really should just take his jacket off. I think you really should just take your jacket off. <laughs> I don't have anything else! Oh, you know what? Look, Orange, just go stupid! Go feral! I kind of want to pick that one. But that's kind of rude. He's clearly a bit embarrassed about it. Oh, it's not to let you save during choices. That's okay. Alright. Don't choose the feral choice. I mean, it's it's pushy. Let's not be... The reason I wouldn't pick it is because I want to be pushy. We're a little far from my hotel, else I would... I could have given you a pair of clothes. Yay. You just give someone your clothes? Well, you seem nice, and I'm not against helping out fellow travelers. Nah, <sighs> I appreciate the sentiment. The two of us ascend three floors into the building, looking for clothes anywhere. I tried not to look at that section. Yeah, uh, okay, okay, now's not the time. Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. I'm fine. Yes, fine, fine. Hmm. Oh! Hey, this place does sell some clothes. Cool, let me go get one clothe. What, one clothe? One unit of clothe? Alright. <laughs> I'm back. Anime! <laughs> Does it seriously just say anime on it? So, how do I look, honestly? You look anime. Anime what? What's that? It's nothing. Now tell me, I'm kind of curious. Uh, you see, anime is like our cartoon? Okay, yeah, sh sure. Those are a thing on our planet. Yeah, it's like that. Well, this shirt just says anime, so it's not focusing on a specific series or anything? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm not dying anymore, at least. Can we resume our search now? Hmm, yeah, sure. We both head down to the first floor of the store before Orange stops and looks at me. Are you by chance looking for someone? Huh? What are you talking about? We're finding Kay, right? Well, yeah, but I'm not talking about Kay. Plus, I mean, she'll show up anyway. You have that kind of face on you. It's an easy read. A little contracted, worn out, but nonetheless a determination. You look like you're longing for a person, not just some place or experience. Really? I could have sworn I was just, you know, exhausted from traveling around here. I don't know. You've been looking like that since we first met. Hmm. I mean, if you put it that way, I did feel like a connection. You don't know who they are? Hmm. Can't say I do. The two of us step out of the store. I wish I could browse longer, but we can't afford to waste any more time than we already have. We immediately stumble back into the streets, already feeling as if the trail has gone eerily cold. There's no sign of her anywhere. Drat. Anywhere else she could have gone? Well, no, unless... Wait. The two of us stare only to find Kay walking around with bags in her hands. She immediately notices us. Well, well, hey there, pals! Did you go shopping? Yes, yeah, sir, I did! I just bought a full set of clothes that I'll probably never wear! How much money do you have left? Not a whole lot! Okay. Yes? How are we gonna get home? Uh, grumble. Hey, Orange. What? You do realize that it may have been a full day since we last ate. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm aware. But the sooner we get back home, the sooner we can relax and grab something to eat. But what if that's a while? Come on, Orange, you'd know you wanna. <sighs> you know what? We got treated the other night. Let's treat them. How about I take you all both out to lunch? Whoa, really? <laughs> they seem down for that. I need some water. Yeah, it's the least I could do. Wow, thank you! Oh, uh, wow. Orange is visibly brush blushing and trying to look away, attempting to conceal his embarrassment. So, where are we going, Chief? Hmm, well, there's a nice noodle place nearby. Hot diggity dog, let's go! Yeah. We walk into a noodle eatery, literally ten steps from where we were standing. When we, were when we entered the eatery, what immediately struck us was how we have had to order the food. Use the vending machine to order and pay for a ticket, then pass it over to the cooks. After that, wait a short while, and they'll ring a bell, indicating that your meal is ready to be picked up. It's super quick and relatively simple. Say, Orange, do you know a place that serves food like this? Mm, can't say I have. Ding, ding. Here it comes. Slurp. They're simple, but delicious, and really salty. I can feel that salt. Hmm, it's like too much. You are both animals. You're, technically, you all are animals, but you know. I'm so, so sorry, I don't have any self-control. I just get feral when I eat. Oh, dude, I can relate. Really? I hardly take in small bites. <laughs> Same. Wait, oh no, does that mean there's no going back? <laughs> Who knows? It's definitely too late for K. So, can I follow up on something? Yeah. About the whole finding someone thing. Okay. It's so weird to bring it up. I mean, like, how did you even know? Apart from looks. Hi there, Tubby. You came You came when there was food and feral eating discussed. That seems appropriate. I can't say I know. I mean, it just looks, yes. But you're emitting some kind of aura around you. Aura? Huh? Yeah, some kind of energy or something. Whatever it is, there's some kind of feeling of longing in it. Huh. Maybe I'm feeling something like that. Oh, trust me, I can definitely feel it. <laughs> what? I'm being serious. Well, I hope we're not putting too much of a damper on your trip. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just gobble food and still stuff and you'll have a grand old time. Uh, can I have seconds? <laughs> Minutes later, we take our leave and head out onto the streets again. So what now? Also, oh yeah, also, thanks for the food. Uh, yeah, it's not a big deal. I guess we'll try to find our way to warp back to our planet then. Any way of knowing if that'll work? Yeah, you'll know if we're still stuck here or not. Oh, but Natra's cool! Can't we stay a bit longer? You could always come back and visit another day. Yeah, that'd be nice. You betcha! Hey! Look, while we're here, how about we do a little shoplift? Orange pinches K in the cheek and begins grabbing her poncho. Okay, you can do your stupid gay crimes elsewhere. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's one way to describe them. Ow, let me go! <laughs> Thanks again. Best of luck finding that someone. Bye-bye! Oh, that sounds like a great idea. Come on, let's go, Orange. Uh, thank you so much for your help. Or, yeah, got nothing else to say. Well, we're going to need to take off now. See you around, I guess. Yeah, perhaps in a totally different galaxy. Or, I think I'll stick to this one, thanks. Well, anyways, we'll try to get ourselves back home. Ah, uh, Manatra's cool. Can't we stay a bit longer? Wait, we're looping. You can always come back and visit another day. Wait, 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 what? 
Why are we why are we looping? Hold on. Oh, that that why did that repeat? <laughs> Achievement unlocked. Be gay. Do crimes. That was weird. I, I think they may have been a, a, like a that might have been a scripting mistake or something. Oh well, whatever. Eh, that wasn't too sure what all that was about. But a connection, an aura, a time loop, Drownhall Day. I can't even feel it, but they apparently noticed it. I wonder if Gangle did too. I have no idea what's happening to me, but it isn't going to kill me right now. So I suppose I should. I'll continue trekking along my trip. I can't shake this feeling off, though. The more I think about it, the more I feel like I'm here for something else. What is it? Chapter 3, The Sheer Bliss of Scramble. Stand clear. Oh. You know, how many minutes? We have four minutes left. You know, I'm going to stop here. This is a, let's see here, how's the save button work? All right. There we go. I think I've, I've seen this visual novel interface before, by the way. I believe this is like an engine for visual novels. I've seen it used before. It could be a, it could be custom made, but I don't think so. What's this little paw button do? Oh, it advances text. But I'm just gonna drop a save there. Let's go back to the, let's go back to the main menu. There we go. This is, uh, this is really cool, actually. I mean, I've seen, a, I saw a few spelling errors and there was that scripting error. And you could technically mark a game for using filtered photos as its backdrops, but I don't really mind. It looks good. It has good music. I don't know if the music is original. I assume it is. It, I've never heard it before. This is pretty good. I, I, I actually rather like it. I don't really play visual novels, if people haven't noticed this. I generally like my games to have gameplay, but this one caught my attention because of the main character, and I was kind of curious about it, and I'm glad I checked it out, because I really enjoy... Yeah, the writing's really solid, aside from a few spelling errors, which, you know, when you're writing this much text, that's fine. It happens sometimes. Um, but I, I really like the conversations, the way the characters talk to each other are really, it's really casual, really colloquial, but also really natural, really well written dialogue, I'd say. Um, it feels like an actual conversation, which is a compliment, definite compliment. Um, but yeah, that was a nightmare's trip, and I would say that I would recommend this game if you enjoy visual novels or just furry things, because this is a furry game, for sure. <laughs>